Hey, Shalom. Shalom. All right, first and foremost, we want to give all praises to the Most High. Yeah. Yeah. Allah, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, we talk with Yahweh. We want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. We want to say Shalom to all the brothers and the boys and sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. All right, may the blessing of election be upon your house. Man, it's a beautiful time because we're seeing all the prophecy speaking, man. And this devil is showing his horns. You see? This man, the, the same figure, I'm gonna say Gates of Hell, because you can't say his name, that a couple years ago, you can't even find that TED talk where he said, if we do a really good job with vaccines, yep. we can get the population down. This man is as deaf. Somebody, uh, you can have a good two, all right? This man, if he's able to go forward with his plans, like it says in Matthew, the 24th chapter, uh, no flesh will be saved. But right now, the things of Esau are being searched out. You know, this man is truly being revealed for who he is. He's the devil that the Bible speaks of. So whoever has it, you know. Habakkuk chapter two, verse four, it says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not of right in him, mm -hmm. but the just shall live by faith. Yea, also, because he transgresses by wine. He transgresses by wine. The philosophy that he pushes in the earth, man. He pushes a completely contrary way than the Lord told us to walk by. Part of that contrary way that he pushes, all right, is, you know, that, that alphabet agenda, getting people to bow to the syringe, which that's gearing up again, all right, which everybody, it's been proven time and time again by this point that that caused many deaths. But they're, they're about to shove that same narrative down these people's throats. You know what these people are going to do? They're going to do it again. They're going to do it again. A lot going to rebel. They got the mask mandate they coming back too. So a lot of people going to rebel this time yeah. too, bro. It's, it's, it's about to get interesting, man. Yeah. We're, we're in the home stretch. All right? And, 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 the, and the more these, this devil starts to push his agenda, the more people are going to seek of the Lord. The elect are going to really start to seek. That's why that scripture started with the just shall live by faith. Yep. Because he's going to be operating in a very chaotic, destructive, deceptive manner. Yeah. So you're going to need to be rooted in the Holy Spirit to get through this, man, because it's getting ready to, like, we see happening in Maui. Yeah. Little Maui. Right. Little, they, 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 basically, this dude, this, this, this guy is trying to establish that he's God on Earth. Right. You know? Yeah. And he's making the people conform to his image. That's right. Yeah, so I, I have a woman kind of put your mind frame on her. You know, she's around you, you say, no, this is how we do, this is how I move things around, da, 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 da. He's done that to the masses of the people. And the, and the scripture that we're reading kind of goes into that. Go ahead. Come on, verse Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yea, also, because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. And he's over, he's going all over the world, pushing his way, his mind frame on all the people. Kamala Harris, man, what, a couple, like a month ago, they sent her ass over there. To what, what was it, Uganda? Yeah, right. to, to say, hey, no, you should be accept, uh, accepted. Ghana, too. I think she went to Ghana. Yeah, all yeah, the right. hand by nation say, hey, you should be accepted of this life, that alternative lifestyle. And then and them hand is like, hell no. You know? So there, there, there's, a, there's a conflict brewing, man. Everybody, all the nations are aligning on their side, whether they want to align, you know, with the, with the East or they're aligned with the West, man. We're getting ready to see that battle play out, which is really for our benefit. Because as these nations go at it, man, we know what happens in the midst of that. Our power intervenes, and the kingdom of heaven gets established. You see? Finish that out. Come on, it says, who enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death. He enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death. You got an article, so after you finish this, you can bring your article out. This man is as death. Wherever he goes, the conditions that are against life follows him, man. A contrary way, iniquity follows. This man has set up military bases, damn in every region of the earth, and pushing his ways on, on the, all these various countries. There's a reason when you go travel abroad that there's a there's an underlying sentiment of disdain for America. Right? Because yeah, they, 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 the people in other countries they understand they're being sorted for their resources. Alright? He enlarges his desire as hell. That part of that is, you know, he extorts people for their resources. Yep. Under the guys, you know, oh, you know, you get to be linked in with us, and da -da -da. but really, it's, it's not to their benefit. And he's pushing that mindset that's contrary to family yep. and life, and to these people that their, their traditions, that their whole world changes once you get in bed with each song. Right. See, go ahead. Real, real quick, okay. Habakkuk chapter one, 
and nine. Speaking of the Chaldeans, which is synonymous with the daughter of the Chaldeans, you saw Edom. It says, they shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. Yeah. And, oh, if you ever notice, when Esau gets involved with the country, violence precedes it. Why? Because he's the one that set up the violence. He'll set up a, a coup in your country, set up a, a movement in your country to where there's conflict, then he steps in. This man, he's the very man that's synonymous with ruling by the sword. Which then goes back to Genesis 27. The reason why that happened is because this is his blessing. His blessing. Yeah. He has the fatness of the earth. So this is his kingdom. Yeah. This is his for now. It's temporary though. So and that word fatness goes into oil. oil. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> that is wow. Yeah. Yeah. If you want oil, you really got to go through the, the, the seesaw. Oh, come on. And, and, and that petrol dollar. And that's the what? The UAA Emirates Ooh. and uh, what's the other uh, Arab country? They align with bricks. Saudi Arabia. Whoa. Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And what gave the dollar, you know, value really? Because back in during the Nixon administration, what they, they made that exchange that hey, you, you got military, all your conflicts, you know, but you got to sell your oil using the petrol dollar. So that's what the, the dollar synonymous became backed by oil because it was no longer backed by uh, silver or gold. Yeah, they bought up all the reserve oil reserves. Yep. So now. They're aligning with the whole different, you know, that Esau's blessing, that oil. You know, you can see things are starting to tear apart at the seams. So he has to make a move. Right. And everybody pretty much has to go through Esau. And what we're seeing in these latter days, though we know it's the elite, yeah. we're seeing people try to get around that dollar, get around that system. You know, because that's one of the great ways of fornication. Nations commit fornication. All right, when their leaders accept currency of another nation. Right. All right, so then you start to submit to a particular level. You align with this particular system, and ultimately the nations are mad in these latter days. War is getting brewed up. Right. That's right, man. You, can we finish that verse? Okay. Going back uh, to Habakkuk chapter 2 in the middle of verse 5, it says, So enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. And that's that new world order. He wants that, that all the nations together under his umbrella, under his philosophy, under his way, and for all the people to receive his mark. Yeah, we're gonna bring up the mark every time we get in front of a camera, man. Because that's 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 the main hurdle that our people are gonna have to jump over. We still got more young people. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Have a coop, chapter one. And ten, and they shall scoff at the kings, and their princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. And that's 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 Esau Edom. He scoffs at kings. He goes throughout the planet Earth, disrupting economies. All right, and when you deal with something like the IMF and these world uh, uh, banks, and the way that these devils have have heaped captivity and, and pretty much gathered all people under their banner. It's absolutely wicked. It's nothing but the modern day Tower of Babel, where they want everything in their control and they, they their desires as hell. So they're, they're, they're gonna take it a step further. All right, they're going, they've, they've gone throughout the planet Earth, submitted, you know, put the, the, the foot down. Now they're receiving a rebellion. So they're like, oh shit, okay, we got something for your ass. Yeah, you know? Yeah, order have chaos. They're gonna use that, they wanna, they seek to use that chaos to their advantage, man. Because the people that stand up against them, they're gonna be painted out to be what, uh, you know, uh, treasonous, traitors. Hey, shall we? They're gonna be treat they're gonna be painted out to be uh individuals, you know, that, that are against life. Because you gotta remember, with the whole uh this is technology and science, he's getting ready to make it seem like he's what's best for people. Right. With that neural link, seen a video recently, uh they 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 got this. They hooked this dude's hand up and he was able to move his hand again. Yeah. So think about think about Big Mama. She ain't walked in 10 years. And she get the, 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 the Neuralink device. And we out here prop signing against her. Right. Hey, that's the MOTV. People are right. gonna look at you don't want my you don't want Big Mama to walk? Hey, what Big Mama, they show her running upstairs and shit. Yeah. She right. done got her life back together. <laughs> <laughs> Big Mama, she pop locking and shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, is Big Mama running a 40? Yeah. Like, God damn, Big Mama. Yeah, damn, she she yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's being presented as a savior. Right. That's what this technology is being presented as. Even your boy Gates of Hell yeah. is being called a modern savior. Wow. And socks like it. You can't find the TED Talk. Well, maybe you can, but it's hard nah, to tell. No, it's not on YouTube no more. It's so hard to find that TED Talk he did. He told you. He, <laughs> he said what he was going to do, and he doing it. Yeah, right? To get people to, because the earth is overpopulated. The Malthusian theory, you know? He said, he said, he said, he said, he said that they won't, in, in, in uh, Gil Bates' TED Talk, he's mentioned reducing CO2 levels. He said it. He was on the screen right He said he was like, if we reduce this much carbon, it's going to reduce this much population. Yeah, and then now crazy. they're talking about big ass vacuums. I'm pretty sure it's on one of them other platforms. We got to get, we got to find, we gotta it. find it's, it and do videos on, on it. Put it on Odyssey. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to get said it too. Remember? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, when, we, when we reduced the population, they said it they, was a slip of the tongue. Yeah. It was a, it, but you know what? Yeah, it, it was. The most I made you say. Yeah. Spirit made you say. It was clapping. Woo! Yeah. I was like, that's That's what you Yeah. But you people, y'all, you're conditioned not to bat an eye at those things. But the elect have been given the eyes to see. So when we see those things, we're like, hold up. These, these are the characteristics of, of that wicked man. You, you got it? Yeah. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse uh, verse 8. It says, And then, that, then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Yeah, the, the wicked is, is, is being revealed now in our time. The, 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 the climax of it. It's going to be when the Lord shows that he has a complete disdain for specifically them. And that's going to that's going to be via what? The, the chariots when he comes back and he burns them all up. They're put into subjugation. All the nations are going to be put into subjugation, but primarily Edom. That, that same nation that was at the head of that council with Psalms 83. In Psalms 83 where it says, uh, yep. they shall confederate yep. against thee. Yep. It says, verse, uh, verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. So if anybody, if you had to do a, a, a who's who, you know how they do the mystery shows, where they, the who done it, the murder cases, say who done it, those little shows? Yeah, if you had to narrow down who's fitting the description of the man that's carrying out the workings of Satan on the earth, who does it fit? It's clearly Esau, the so-called white man. It's Satanism, and also just to go back to that, that, that Gil, Gil Bates, that's an easier way to say it, huh? <laughs> BG, yeah. yeah, BG, BG, yeah, man. man, real BG. Yeah. Real BG. <laughs> Going back to his TED talk and what he stated is Satanism is required for them to tell you what they're going to do before they actually do it. That way they're blameless. The same way it's, it's like the left hand side of the prophets, because the prophets we say what the Lord is going to do before He does it. That way the blood is off our hands. The Lord has warned you. If you don't heed, that's on you. So they do the same thing on the left hand side. And he blatantly told you that the goal is to decrease the population. Yeah, well, I, I remember uh, doing a lesson and on that stance, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just as Yahweh Bashan was trying, has his prophets on the right hand side, yeah, yeah. Telling, telling this devil what he's getting ready to do. Remember, there's a balance. There's, there's a left hand side to everything. So these elites, they look at themselves, Elder Yahshua did a video on it. They, yeah. look, they literally like, look, we about to be God. Yeah. We are our God. So they got their little prophets, the Bill Gates. The yeah. Noah Harari and the Claude Schwan, all these different individuals, that's their quote unquote prophets that are letting you know what they what they plan on doing on the left hand side. You see? Yeah. But it's but it's so heavy because you're how about you know. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they, it's like the, it's heavy when you think about it, like the, the Lord has really put it in their mind and they really truly think that they're about to accomplish it. Right. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Yeah. Right, they even put shit in like uh, uh what is it? The Simpsons. You see? They put a little shit like with, with you know, Jake, Jake just being all over that shit. All the Simpsons predicted it. That goes back yeah. into Esau, you know what I'm saying, proclaiming himself that he is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, I'm going to Yeah, they even put the, they put the do in one of the episodes I had seen. Yeah. The direct interview. Yeah. yeah. They, they had, they had burned up the whole town. The it's on the Mount Doom can now. Yeah, yeah. Every, everything that was blue would burn up. Yeah. Direct energy weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Say that shit on your page. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. I said, dude, he's I'm talking about him. <laughs> All right, this is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I'm going to read uh, verse 9 in the NLT. It says, This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. Man. Yeah, I'm That's what we're witnessing. Like, yeah. even these uh, 
like the thing that happened in all right Hawaii yeah. that was really a counterfeit disaster mm -hmm. yeah. but it's being presented to the people as if like this is natural right that don't happen on islands like that bro. oh Hell no. <laughs> you got fire or something. He's like, missing. <laughs> yeah, come, come on, on man. I, I seen a video where you, it actually looked like you could see like something was beaming down. This place is crazy. Right. But like it says, what Amos was the Amos 6, so there'll be evil in the city and the Lord have not yeah, done it. He set him up. They want to do everything, you know, like a left hand version. So they want to have control. Because whenever something happens, the Lord uses disaster, He uses judgments to get pieces to move on the board. All right, so he can set things up the way he wants it. Esau's trying to be that way. But again, like you said, he's still in the hand of the Lord. Well, remember, uh, well, remember Pharaoh had his, he had his magi that yeah. was doing like the, you know, when uh, making the staff turn into a serpent and turning yeah. the water to blood. Yeah. You know, he had his magicians doing the same thing. So, yeah. you see, but the, but the things that had the magicians be like, man, hell no, man. You ain't, these people gotta go back to the, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Was when the Lord set that up. You know, the, the pet angel down, yeah. smiting the firstborn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the yeah. famine was coming, they was like, man, hold on a second, man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what Esau is doing right now. This thing that's happening right now, what Esau is like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And that main thing is the fact that the prophets are rising up from the right thing. That's right. He's like, hey, that's a terrible fear. It's like, don't put trillions right. of dollars I got a precept for you. Job 21. I started at 29. Have you not asked them that go by the way? And do you not know their tokens that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him for what he have done? Who shall declare his way to his face? The prophets, man. And that goes into that scripture in 2 Thessalonians. All right? The Lord would uh, expose him, all right, would reveal him, all right, through the word of his mouth, which is the prophets, which is going to lead to the brightness of Yahweh Shai's coming, which is going to take this devil down, man. We're speaking the end of you devil's reign and, and, and legacy of terror, rape, rob, and murder. We're speaking it down. We're chatting it down. The earth needs new management. And before that happens, the Lord is going to raise up his prophets, okay? To tell you that, yeah. to accuse you. Go ahead. Can I get that word declare for you? Yeah, that word declare in the Hebrew is uh, the God, and it says to be conspicuous. And that word conspicuous means like when something stands out, like a conspicuous wall, like it's definitely something that's easily seen. It says conquer, overcome, to be courageous, overcome. They overcame him by the word, by the blood of Yahweh Shai and by the word of their testimony. This testimony, this this is a testimony because the, the judge is the most high God, Yahweh. Alright, and he's gonna set judgment through Yahweh Shai. That's like the, the, the thing in the Bible. You know, that Yahweh Shai is that, man. That great millstone. Go ahead. It says to be vigorous, Ooh, to be effective. Be effective. See, because this word is affecting these people. Hey, this, the word is affecting these devils, man. You see? And it, that lines up with Wisdom of Solomon 5. It says, Then saw the righteous man stand with great boldness in right. the faces of that book. Yeah. Hey, I got something real quick. Okay, go ahead. Hey, because uh, the elder had mentioned, uh, he said, uh, in that Job, they said the wicked was, the wicked was reserved, right? Yeah. So when you go into the etymology of the word reserved, I'm going to get straight to what it says. Um, it says to set aside for a future use. Now, when you get the Zendorian Bible Dictionary and you go into Edom, it says that there are, there are, uh, uh, matter of fact, you might have to go Yeah, yeah. I, I got you. I got you. Okay. Okay. It's going to say that they were reserved. They were going to be for future judgment, man. Let you know who that wicked is that it's talking about, man. In, right. in the book of Job, it's talking about the Edomites, man. You see? It said Edom, right? Yeah, Edom. It should be Edom. Uh, let's see. Let me find it because it's, uh... Okay, here it is. Uh, this is the definition of Edom in the Zanjavan Compact Bible Dictionary. And I'm going down straight to the point. This is towards the latter part of the definition, the last paragraph. It says, Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. You see? Great future judgment. They were reserved, man. 
then you know that that's, that's time after he saw Edom, man. <laughs> see, ain't no way he can escape. The, he can't right. can escape, man. The Lord is revealing this man. Right. See? Right. It says, see notably Isaiah 34, verse 5 and 6, and Isaiah 62. Mm. Man. That's it. So Cain didn't get away. Nope. Yeah. nope. He yeah. didn't get away. You, Everybody pays, and the Lord reserved the judgment of the wicked seed, this is the children of Satan. He, res he reserved it till this time. Because the scripture said that should not be an end of the people. So that means everybody is back. Yeah, still yeah. Here. Esau is still here. His judgment is going to be the most public. So before all the nations, when the, the Lord has built them up to this point, to seem like a God to these people, all right, and he's going to tear them down with effortlessness, okay, to, to, to magnify his power the same way he was magnified back in Egypt. Like said, he's doing it now with the spirit of his mouth. Okay, okay. Prophecy is at the forefront of everything, man. That's why I say these camps and brothers go out and teach him, you have to covet to prophesy. Prophecy is very important. The prophecy has got this man gonna come down with great wrath, right? Yeah. So by you knowing prophecy gonna take place, you know the end is coming. So you know what to pray for, you know how to pray. There's a difference, you see? You got to covet to prophesy, man. That's the whole forefront of this message. You would think all of Israel would think that way. All right, all the camps who would think they would covet prophecy, but they don't. If I went to one of these regular people in the world, I said, hey, I'm gonna give you an ability to know the future in detail. That's something right. they would cherish and covet. That would be like a big deal to them. It's like, okay, right. yeah. Because covet means to desire, right? Yeah. To, to strive, you know? But you, you, it, it doesn't seem like a lot of these camps are legit going into prophecy and linking it up to the right thing. The not. spirit ain't dealing with them. Because of, what is it, Revelation 19 and 10? The spirit of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. They're not coming in the spirit of our big brother, man. Okay. Okay. You got it, you got it. You know, I'm just going to make a point and add on to your point. Man. They're coming in the spirit of actually coveting, like in, in the sense of being greedy. Like yeah. Being greedy. You know, Long using way. the word, using the word to fulfill their own lust and to fulfill their own abilities, man. See, they're not worried about, they're not, like the scripture said, they're not worried about the affliction of Joseph. Right. See, they're more so worried about how they, how they can make the, how they can get the bag. You know, I was listening to your video on the way up here about the counter, uh, uh, pretty much the Babylon money, the money yeah. magic. Yeah. That's what they, that's what, that's what they focus on, man. Mm -hmm. You know, the bag. The bag. That's what, that's what and it's empty. About. It's not even there. <laughs> See that? But not the losing. That's, that's not, not for our people. Name. Mindset is all for prophecy, bro. Right. People base their value here based off of, you know, what kind of money they have, what occupation that they have. Yeah. You know, niggas really do that. They, you know, you see what kind of car I drive? Like that equates to the, the, their moral, you know, value or the value that the Lord has, sees in them. Yeah. The only thing that truly gives you value is if you're useful to the Lord in righteousness. You know, these people. Yeah, the scripture says, "Riches, riches deliver not in the day of destruction." Oh, bloody broad wings and fly away. Sirach 39 and one, but he that giveth his bond to the law of the Most High, and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all ancient and be occupied in prophecies. Yeah, man, so you always talk about the checklist. If you're trying to narrow who the prophets are, narrow who the wicked are, okay, the Lord gives you scriptures like this to say, this person, you know, is he a man of the Lord? Well, he's gonna be checking this box. He's gonna be occupied in prophecy. They're gonna be instant in season and out of season. They're not gonna be in the spirit of God bless America. There's a, there's, a, there's a list of boxes that the person has to check, and you say, oh, this, this must be a man of the Lord. Right. But the, your, the, your teachers, man, they're not occupied in prophecy. They're, they're, there's one subset of men, I honestly can say that prophecy comes up every lesson. You know? Right. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men, not no goddamn Martin Luther King. Right. Not no goddamn Malcolm X. Right. Yeah, they, they may have said things that made sense, but we, we know overall, those ain't the leaders the Lord wanted us to follow. Yeah. We seeking out the the the, the, uh, the sayings of King David, King Solomon. All right, all of the righteous men that 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 rule. All right, of the sons of God, those who re really are responsible for laying forth the sacrifice that led to this legacy being continued. All right, so he will keep the sayings of renowned men, and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. <laughs> He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. Yeah, man, and like I said, this is Matthew the 13th chapter. What did Yahweh shot? Tell the disciples, Un unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So this, you know, at the end of the day, it's not given 
to everybody to know those dark parables, Amen. those sayings, understand prophecy. To really see the future. Your brother did a beautiful lesson. I watched it earlier this morning. Yeah. Going into it. He called here tied the lesson of we can see the future. Because of wisdom. Yeah. You see? Yeah, you got it right. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 8. If a man desire much experience, she knoweth things of old, and conjectureth aright what is to come. Things of old, like history, yeah. right? You're going to know these things. Go, go. Hey, I'm talking about that way. It go with that, too. That's yeah, why you yeah. brought that. You got it right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we know history now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's important. So, yeah, you know, you got to know certain aspects of history to, to fully teach this truth. Yeah. yeah. As the saying goes, you gotta know history to understand the mystery. Yeah. You know? She knoweth the subtile, excuse me, she knoweth the subtilities of speeches and can expound dark sentences. That's why I was having this wisdom and knowledge and understanding. It's how we're able to go into the parables in the script, right? You see? Because of wisdom. Hey, yeah. that's how we're able to piece together that this book is about us. Knowing the history. If you don't know about the Greek captivity, and you just you go from, from the, uh, the end of the Old Testament and jump to Matthew. You're not gonna understand who the Gentiles are. It's so, you know, us knowing that history, like you said, allows us to understand the history. Last verse. It says, she foreseeth signs and wonders and the events of seasons and times. The events of, you know, events that have happened already, you know, from history and the events that are what the, the events that are to come. The main event that we're looking to see is what? The mandatory implementation of the MOT. That's an event, that's, that's something in the future that was written thousands of years ago that our forefather John wrote for us. Right, right. The apostle John wrote for us for us, for us to understand and know what's literally happening right, right now. now. It's literally happening right before our face so we can see it. So, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 21 in the GNT, it says, I have learned things that were well known and things that have, not, that have never been known before because wisdom who gave shape to everything that exists was my teacher. Yeah, man. So hey, going into that mark, understanding how this devil was gradually getting around to that to that point to push that. That's that's the wisdom that we've been given. That's something to be coveted and cherished, man. Because now uh, I bring this up all the time. If you've seen a movie a, a thousand times before, and you know how in scary movies they have the jump scares where the guy pops out. You're gonna be able to be composed after you've seen it a hundred times. Right, you already know. Because you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna laugh at it. You're gonna be like, oh yeah. It's not gonna be something that cause you to get out of character. That's why the scriptures say wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that time. Right. So because we understand the future, we're gonna be able to be composed and move accordingly, move spiritually during the time of Jacob's trouble. These people aren't gonna be equipped. They they this they they've never seen this movie. We read it over and over and over. So as things come, yeah, it's gonna be different to be in it, but we're gonna be prepared in the spirit, man. Hey, just like this, when Noah was on the scene, when Noah got that information from the Most High, you think he prayed for, well, wait, wait by two more years. Hey, no, uh -huh. when you understand prophecy, you know what to pray for. You know a famine is coming. Yeah. So you would ask the Lord to keep him from, to keep us from his wrath. Yeah. So if you don't know how to prophesy or, or follow him in prophecy, you're not gonna know what to pray for. In yeah, that right. time, right. see, all that wraps up together, man. That's important. You go have a good three and one piece about that. It start off a prayer of Habakkuk, a chicken off or something like that. Yeah, uh, song of chicken off. Right, because in verse two, it's why because the wrath of the Lord was coming on the scene. Yeah, yeah. You got to know how to pray in these times, man, because we see what's happening: famine and the MOTV and concentration camp, things of that nature. So we ask the Lord to have mercy upon us and to remember us in this round of wrath, man. Not only do we know what to pray for. We also know how to conduct ourselves while we pray and wait. Yep. All right? Like it says in Zephaniah 2 and 3, seek righteousness, seek meekness, so that you may be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Everybody should be seeking to be in, to be hid when the Lord gets down and busy on this place, man. Yep. Yes. Yep. Wisdom of Solomon 22 and 16 in the GNT, it says a wooden beam can be put into the into a building so firmly that an earthquake cannot shake it loose. A person can be trained to use reason and good sense so well that he keeps his head when a crisis comes. Ooh, man, composure. 
And you know, when you get composure from, when you get composure from, it's constant repetition. When you look at, you pick your favorite athlete, the great quarterbacks, who the game is on the line, and they just, it's, it looks like another day for them. It's because they, they, they repped it out so much to the point where it's, it's muscle memory, it's second nature. So in the spirit, for the elect, it's gonna be muscle memory to lean on the Lord for understanding. It's gonna be muscle memory to operate in faith. See? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, like you said about reading that script. Yeah. You gotta come constantly read that script and get that foundation. Now, you, like you said, when you're watching a movie, you, you don't already watch the movie, yeah. so you ain't gonna be shook. Everybody else who ain't seen them before, it's gonna, it's gonna affect them different, man. It's gonna hit them different. They, uh, Pastor Hall was talking about, he, you know, he said, when you seen a movie, this a couple videos ago, he said, when you watch a movie, you, you'll be in the movie telling telling your lady the movie, and she's like, yeah. shut up, I'm trying to watch. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. That's the prophets. Yeah. We're telling the people, <laughs> we're telling the people, we, we, we're the loud mouth in the theater, like, hey, well, he's about to do this. Because, because your senses have been exercised. Right. You know, you're, you, 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 hey, the scripture says, can I can't get it with you for you. Yeah. Proverbs 27 and 12. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. Yep. It says, but the simple pass on and are punished. Mm. Yeah. If you're prudent, you know, if you have the foresight and you're crafty and you're shrewd, you're going to understand and know what's to come and you're going to what? You're going to hide yourself from the evil. And yeah. the way that you hide yourself, you hide yourself by way of coming into this truth, coming into the knowledge. That's right. See? Because the knowledge is like into a tabernacle, it's like into a, uh, it's like into a uh, watchtower. A a stronghold of a yeah. billion, yeah, covert from the storm, right? Yeah, 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 you know exactly. what I'm saying? You're gonna hide yourself with the knowledge, yeah. But the simple that, that, that's not paying attention, they're gonna see, they're gonna be a part of this, this, this scary movie, right? They're not gonna know what the, 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 the jump scares, yeah. What's gonna happen, man? They're gonna be, they're gonna be frightened, them. they're gonna be caught unawares, man. It's gonna overtake them as a thief in the night. In First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, it talks about the day of the Lord being a thief in the night. But then it goes on to those who have been imparted with wisdom, telling them that this day should not overtake you as a thief, right? right? Because they, they know the movie. When I was a kid in Orlando, man, uh, I believe it was SeaWorld, they had this experience where it was like, you were in like a little show. So you'd get on the car and you go through it like a little show. Yeah. And the, the characters were like 3D. So you know when the, the whale would jump out and it shoot the water out. But if you rode the ride before, you know when to duck. So you don't gotta get wet. You walk around the park all wet, okay? So we, we understand when the particular things are gonna happen so that we can move out the way. So we can hide ourselves like you just read. Yeah. Isaiah 46 and 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Yeah, man. So as these evils come upon the earth, a lot of people will look at what the Lord's doing, because when, when people start dropping dead, it's going to seem outlandish. It's going to be worse than any event documented or undocumented. The Lord told us this. So when these evils come upon the earth, remember that the Lord sent men to warn you of these things from the jump. So it's, it's not going to be something that you can say is unfair or unrighteousness with God. Because he sent out man to, to declare these things unto you from the jump. You said that not his counsel. Isaiah 45 and 19. I have not spoken in, in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not to the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare the things that are right. Hey, because look, he got his prophets. What I said to Corinthians, think for that I said, set the apostles last and, 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 and to become a spectacle. So this is all display right in front of you. He's not talking in a tunnel with us in the tunnel then y'all go out here and speak. No, this is on yeah. the internet, man. This ain't, this ain't kept a secret because you can't say, well, we didn't hear it, we didn't know. No, it's right in front of your place and face as a, a big spectacle, man. Yeah. You can't get around it. And not only that, I, I know we, we tell, we get on the Israelites that are just comment board banging all the time. But hey, every video and news article you go on, you got them jakes on there putting up precepts saying this, the, Lord, the Bible talks about this. There's really nowhere you could go and not be confronted with this truth. Yeah, yeah. The Lord got it that way, man. Every major city across the world, you're going to see dudes and fringes in, in, in your marketplaces. You know what I mean? Telling tell Esau yeah. he the wicked. Telling people what's getting ready to befall America. 
Well, like some, some of us. And it's not in vain. We, yeah. This is the truth. Yeah. The Lord didn't set us up in vain. Like, this is a part of a, of a very, very divine order that the Lord has set up. The Lord is doing things in the earth, man, and we're witnessing this, right? Yeah. But we're at the, like, the prophet's job is to come into the earth and speak it before it happens. Okay. Which is a sacrifice. All right, this Amos chapter 3 and verse 7 in the uh, GNT. The sovereign Lord never does anything without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. That's dope. And before the Lord ever takes down any kingdom, if you Christians understood, you would know that the Lord always sends his men out before he takes a place down. And the thing is, he showed his prophets his intents and purposes before you do so. Jeremiah 30 and 24. The fierce anger of the Lord should not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart. And intents mean his purpose. Right, but you're not a liar. You're right. Not a man that should be reading. Yeah, I'm getting the word intent real quick. Yeah, it's a little more. His purpose, direction, his plot. <laughs> See? The Lord plotting against his devil. But he not, okay, Jeremiah 30 and 24. The fierce anger of the Lord should not return until he have done it. Because he's a man that should not lie. He doesn't lie. His word don't go out for it, right? And until he have performed the intents of his heart, in the latter days, you shall consider it. See? You consider it now because the men of the Lord is out on the highways and byways. So when you see that happen, you know something is, something is going on. Right. Man. The Lord has sent the latter rain. We're the true we're the latter, latter day saints. Right Remember right. the latter day saints? Yeah. <laughs> we're the true latter day saints. Oh, consider me to teach and instruct. You see? This could be a doctrine that's going to teach you these things, man. You see? Yeah, you got it. Man. I got some. Excuse me. Romans 7 and 18. It says, But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. You see, and when you get that word sound, that word is, is, uh, is a throngas. A throngas. And it says, A musical sound whether vocal or instrumental, to the voices of the preachers of the gospel. Man. See? So that, that sound going throughout the whole earth is this new song being sung. And that's why Yahweh Shai stated in uh, John, what is it, John the 15th chapter? He said that uh, uh, there shall be no cloak for their sins. Right. There ain't going to be no, there's not going to be anybody that's going to say, well, I never heard this word of, of the truth of Israelites. I ain't never heard of no mess of the Israelites. No, man, it's, it's not going to be no... It's not going to be no Israelite, right? That's not going to know or has have heard the word. Not one. Even these people walking up and down the street, it's not paying no attention. Their ears are still hearing the sound, but they're not. It's not. But the Lord's not making them comprehend. But it's still hitting their ears. But that sound is, is talking about what a musical instrument that's being sung worldwide. It's like it's, it's like the Lord is broadcasting it worldwide. Well, that the word, symphony. That word, the ends in that same verse. It's Paras, and it says, um, of a thing extending throughout a period of time, it says the remotest lands, Ooh. the remotest lands, the frontier, the ends of the earth. So the remotest lands, like for, for all the people who've been allotted to receive salvation, who the Lord desires to save, they're going to hear it. Yeah, you know, and that word world is what to me. Like, you know what's talking about? It's talking about the entire earth, the whole world. That's what that's talking about, man. So this word is going to be, this word is going to be uh, promoted. You know, it makes me think about, you know, like, I know, like, Elder Yashawam and Elder Ariala, they tell the stories, like, whenever they seen the apostles on YouTube, they galvanized y'all to be like, man, we got to go out there and preach. You know, I know it was first, it was, uh, uh, like, uh, Abishah Ma'ala and yourself, but but the, the way that y'all heard it, y'all heard the sound. And it prompted, you know, different camps to start popping up throughout Babylon. To what you have, to what you see going on right now. Literally, the Great Awakening is, is like and then exploding from that point is what you, what you see happening right now because the sound went out. You know, yes, it's hit man. You know. Uh, it made me think when you talking about like that sound, uh, like a trump, how they shoot it, like uh, like into a trumpet. Uh, you can hear a trumpet. Everybody's gonna hear the trumpet. You may not understand the song, the tune, the note that's being playing, but like you said, it's still being it's still being put out there. It's still being heard. Cornet. Loud as hell. That's the, and that was one of the major instruments of the the, the, the choir, the Lord set up. The cornet. You know, 
like that smooth jazz thing. That's the, you know, that's a dope sound, you know. And that's that, that this word is likened unto all of that. But um, I got Isaiah, I got one. This is uh, Isaiah 41 and 21. Produce your call, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the King of Jacob. Because this word is the only thing making sense. There's nothing, there's nothing out here that can come up against what the, the what's been given to the prophets, man. It says, let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. So all of these other gods, ultimately, bring them forth. Bring forth your strong reasoning against this truth. And has your God pronounced what was going to happen? Has your God sent out men that have faithfully told the people this is going to happen? Uh, pursuant to what our God said, here, 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 this, this. None of the other gods and philosophies are doing that. If anything, all they're doing is coming up against the Bible mm -hmm. to really get their platform going because really the Bible is the only thing that's making sense right now. All right, it says, let them bring forth them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things what they be. All right, because you got like philosophies that'll talk about, well, it was a flood. Yeah, the flood was in many stories. The flood, the Bible stole the flood story. Okay, well, tell us what happened after the flood. Who survived the flood? <laughs> According to your doctrine. According to your belief, okay. Yeah, the Epic of Gilgamesh had record of the flood. Well, they're Hamites, duh. Ham survived the flood along with Noah, Shem, Japheth, Japheth and their wives. So yeah, the Hamites are gonna have a story of the flood. But who survived the flood? Did it just, die? everybody die? <laughs> exactly. If everybody died and you believe in a flood, well, who survived it? Exactly. <laughs> what happened after that? Because th through that we should we should have uh, the ability to trace races back, all right, and nations back to the uh, uh, your uh, your particular belief. We do that. Okay. It says, "Let them show the former things what they be, that we may consider them, and know the latter end of them, or declare us things to come." <laughs> right? And that's, you know, Isaiah, the Lord using Isaiah to boast to these other guys, bring forth your cause and let your God, your doctrine, your belief, your so-called prophets tell us the things that are coming. What's next? Okay? It says, it says, show the things that are to come hereafter that we may know that ye are God's. Yea, do good or do evil that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Yeah, we're dismayed with the, with the, with the Lord. We're, and we're like, wow, man. Our power is doing something. Our power is doing a lot in the planet Earth, man. I got it. I got it. Oh, no, go ahead, man. You got it, bro. Okay, sir. You can break it down, too. All right, Kyle, this is Land backing off of what, uh, what Elder Yashawamba just read. Isaiah 44, verse 6 and 7 in the NLT. This is what Yahweh says, Israel's king and redeemer, Yahweh of heaven's armies. I am the first and the last. There is no other God. And what this means when he says there is no other God, they ain't talking about how, you know, you got these Old Testament only guys. They just, they, they didn't throw off the, the, the flatter <laughs> so far, right? But here it is, it's like, well, yeah, he said there is no other God. No, it's talking about there is no other power. You see, like, yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh does his bidding through his right hand, right? Which is Yahweh shining the holy host. Right? Verse 7. It just read, what did it just say? I am the Lord of hosts, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, read that. Read that word for hosts. Read okay. it Read it again and then read the word for hosts. Okay. Because that right there will cut it. Yep. Isaiah 44, verse 6. It says, uh, I'll read it in the, in the KJV because it has the word host there. Thus said Yahweh, the king of Israel, and his redeemer, Yahweh of hosts. Right? And when you get that word host, that word host here is Tazabah. All right? It says, that which goes forth. Army, <laughs> war, warfare, host, host of angels. Host of angels. <laughs> so if he's the Lord of hosts, all right, and he's saying, I'm the only power, which we know the other angels of powers, what is he saying? He's saying ultimately nothing, all right, operates outside of his power. All right? The Most High God, Yahweh, man, he established, all right, the, the host. 
which at the for, at the forefront of it is Yahweh Shai. Yep, because it says the Redeemer. See, when you right. go to like Exodus 20, what is it, Exodus 23, I think it is, that Redeemer was Yahweh Shai. He was that angel that redeemed us out of the land of Egypt. Right, That's but Yahweh got the credit. He got the credit, but Yahweh's got the credit because he's the one that sent it. He was the one that set it up. See, and he executed it, right? Yahweh Shai executed it, right? Verse uh, 7 in the NLT, it says, Who is like me? Let him step forward and prove to you his power. Let him do as I have done since ancient times when I established the people and explained its future. <laughs> See, so he's like, man, look, if there's any other guy like me, let him let him come forward and let him prove what's happening right now. Like you said in one of your old, one of your video, recent videos, he's like, man, look, if Simon will walk up again, man, no, have him, have him break down what he believes in. Have them break down all these 2,000 plus Egyptian gods and their creation story and all this other kind of matter. Let, let him prove what their God, what's happening in the world right now, today, and these other guys that claim that our power is false, well, go to your documents and prove what's happening right now. And they won't be able to do it. That's why they gotta, that's why they gotta land, that's why they gotta pretty much go on the back of the Hebrew Israelites now. Right. And, 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 and you, you don't see no more Shaka of Moses. And, you know, uh, uh, Tahuti with the with the drugs in his boot, you know. But you don't see the, you don't see these guys no more, man. You see, now everything everything is being talked about about the Hebrew Israelites. You see, and that's all through the dealings of Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai, man. This word is taking the world by grip, like whereas nobody can be without excuse. Everything is re everything is re everything is revolving around the word, man. Sorry. You got it. All right, I got two more. This uh, Psalms 86 and verse 8 in the uh, NLT, it says, No pagan God is like you, O Lord. None can do what you do. That's right, man. Going into, like the brother said, the works, man. Real quick, I'm going to jump to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse, uh, let me see. And verse uh, 32. Yeah, I'm reading the NLT. Deuteronomy 4 and 32 in the NLT, it says, Now search all of history from the time the Most High created people on the earth until now and search from one end of the heaven to the other. Has anything as great as this ever been seen or heard before? Has any nation ever heard the voice of God speaking from fire as you did and survived? Has any other God dared to take a nation for himself out of another nation by means of trials miraculous signs, wonder, war, and a strong hand, a powerful arm, and, a, and terrifying acts. Yet, that that is what the Lord your God did for you in Egypt right before your eyes. See, you don't see, you can clearly see the works, even now in these times, you can clearly see the works of the Lord in the earth, man. Going back into the, like the elder was talking about the time of the flood, you see, the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, all right, the time of the Exodus when the, uh, when the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, you see. There is actual documentaries going into that and showing evidence, man. Showing the chariot wheels in the water. Just backing up the scriptures, showing the acts of the Lord, man. But you can't you can't go on YouTube and see the evidence of Allah working in the earth, man. You see? <laughs> or Buddha, or none of these pagan guys, man. Why? Yeah, Nuka, all the Egyptian guys, man. Why? Because that's why yeah, that's why the Yahweh said, man, hey, there is none like me, man. You see? That's why Habakkuk it said, I heard the speech of thy word and it, and I was and I was afraid. You know the power in the earth, man. The heaven or the above just to bring that type of magnitude to a person, man. You get the words of the Lord, you get afraid. Man. No I other book. It. No book can want the Bible said you, you can't match a book with this or any other history with it, man. It's only one, man. That's it. It's Isaiah 44, excuse me. Isaiah 41, verse. Let's see. I, I'm gonna I'm read verse 21, 22, then jump down to verse 26. Produce your cause, saith the Lord Yahweh. Bring forth your strong reasons, say, saith the King of Jacob. I just broke that out. Okay. Oh, oh, wow. Nah, That's bring it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 22. He really wants to come out. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for it to come. You know, uh, yeah, the elder said, you know, man, you just brought that out, but it's spirit wanted to come out again, man, because they're, these other different idols, because they're all different more than these idols, they cannot, and as the scripture says, man, uh, 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 Isaiah 34 and 16, you know, none shall want her mate, you know, none can really, 
no, there is no other book belief that can match what, what the Bible says because everything that you can see going on in the world right now, you can relate it back to the scriptures. Right, and every prophecy, every word the Lord spoke is going to hit the mark. Each of these prophecies is going to happen. Like, like the Israelites waking up. There was no way around that. Us going into captivity before we woke up. There was no way around that. The Lord spoke these things and it's not going to want his mate. It's not going to be looking not. Nah, ultimately, it's going to hit the mark and do what the Lord said it was going to do. Because we're speaking out here right now, things are happening. Yep. This is live. This is straight recorded live. Like live, literally. What we saying now, things are happening. You got to up and like, right? Fine. This is Psalms 33 and, and verse 4 in the NLT. It says, For the word of the Lord holds truth, and we can trust everything he does. Mm. If you read it in the KJV, it says, For the, Lord, the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. Man. You see? So we don't, man, ain't can't nothing stand up to these scriptures, man. You see? That's why everything is revolved around the scripture, man. Everybody's trying to come up and, and dispute the Bible, man. You right. see? Even like, like the elder said, man, these, these, uh, uh, these ontology niggas, man. Where are all your guys? You niggas never talk about it, man. All you talking about is the Lord, a God that you don't even believe in. Where's your prophecies in Egypt, man? You see all these guys that you're supposed to have. Where's the prophet? Why is your black ass going to slavery, man? Can't none of those 2,000 guys tell you that, man. Bro, they can't even speak. They're idols. Right. They collect dust all over and break. Right. Come on, man. That's made by men's hands. Like, how oh, weird, man. Isaiah 43, verse 6 through 9. I will say to the north, Give up and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. Woo. This is happening right now for this bird, man. You know, you know Jake, is being wrote, Jake is being risen up from all across the four corners of the earth, man. Right? Everyone, excuse me, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yeah, I have made him. <laughs> hey, and the scriptures talk about how. You know, we will be created unto good works. You see, because right. this isn't of us. You see, this knowledge that we have, hey, 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 the scriptures talk about how pretty much um, uh, our sufficiency is of the Lord, man. You see, this is the Lord's program. Like I, Isaiah 44, verse 1. Hey, like that scripture lets us know what we're doing right now. That was written before we was born, man. And we're actually doing what the scripture said would happen. Right. Right? It says, Everybody that's born is born to fulfill a prophecy. Whether you're eating or drinking and being married, whether you're ruling the world as the Edomites, you know, whatever you may be, all right? Or the prophets. The prophets were born into the earth to fulfill what was written of the Lord. Ezekiel 37. All right, the dry bones had to awaken through the prophets going out. That's what Ezekiel represented. Well, we had to come and fulfill that. Yes. All of these things, man, that there's people set up on the earth particular rulers of these other nations that are born to shoot missiles on Babylon. Everybody's playing their course, man, but it's all ordained to the Lord, man. And that's where giving us that understanding gives us comfort. That's why the understanding of the scriptures is like it unto comfort. Because it comforts you in every way. It gives you closure. It gives you all of the answers you've been looking for. It tells you what's next. And it's faithful. Man, all time, faithful. That's why this is the woman to be into. That's right. Verse 8, it says, Bring forth the blind people that have ears, and the deaf that have ears. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Because the Lord, he's the one that creates the, uh, the eyes to see and the ears to hear, man. See, spiritually, right? Here's the point, verse 9. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this, and show us former things? <laughs> Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. See, so uh, who, who can bring forth these things for the come and their witness? Let their prophets come forth, man. You see, because, hey, because the scripture says that the wisdom of this world will be considered foolish, man. See, he will bring forth the prophets or the quote unquote wisdom and the, and the, uh, the wise of this world, it will be brought to naught, man. You see? And it's all being done through his word coming out, man. That the Lord, he, he had put forth his wisdom that came from a whole different dimension into yeah. vessels, into, into men like us. Weak vessels. Weak vessels that, you know, we, we, you know. Oh, but through this word going out, it's literally breaking down strongholds, man. 
That's why Esau is so, that's why he's so fearful and scared because he can't, this isn't something that he can tangibly grab. He can tangibly go into the temple back in the day and, you know, bring a sack it. He can't do it. He can't do it with this. You know? That was amazing. This is uh, Proverbs 20 and 12. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even them both. Like you said, <laughs> you know? And he's opened up our understanding. Now we have eyes to see, ears to hear, and he blocks particular people from seeing it. Get it now. Yep. Esau is basically set up by the Lord and a, a lot of Pharaoh. He's the modern day Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened by the Lord. Pharaoh was led to chase the Israelites into the red, into the sea, <laughs> uh, the Red Sea, so he can drown. The Lord made his dumb ass do that. He put him in a position in all of his army to drown. So you Edomites are no different. You just have more technology. You you, uh, you, you, you have more you know control. But ultimately, Pharaoh is linked to a, 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 a vessel fitted for destruction. You Edomites, you through. You're not gonna win. You think you're gonna just make everybody put a mask on again and everybody's gonna bow to your little BS little uh, juice? Look, and the, the charisma of the Lord is gonna swap. The, the Lord said he's gonna send his son to rebuke all of these wicked inventions. It's, right. it's, right. <laughs> it's wicked. You, you Edomites are played out. You're childish. And you got some nerves to try to come up against the Israelites for what we're teaching and saying we're crazy. You're diabolical. You're losing your damn mind. Yeah, he tripping. He's still mad from back in Genesis. He mad. He got them lentils in his back teeth. He hurt. He hurt. <laughs> he want that blessing back. He want that birthright back. But it's too late. The Lord had it set up in the spirit that we would have chosen, man. Right. But he gave you a temporal blessing. All of the nations. That's another thing about our power. All nations rule. He was fair. Yeah, exactly. Everybody had their little peace, their little time to shine, so say. Subjects, you know? And you Edomites have the Lord has blessed you. You can't, you, you won. Right. <laughs> you can't won. Win forever, no? yeah. You just ain't gonna win forever. Jacob is gonna win forever, man. Isaiah 29, verse 17, and I'm gonna read down. <clears throat> is it not yet a very little? That's what's happening right now. Right, and Lebanon, too, yeah. is symbolic of the elect. Yes. Because that's where Solomon um, got the majority of, of, of wood to build his palace. Not the temple, certain parts of the temple, but Lebanon was where he got. Yeah, yeah, the temple. Yeah. yeah. yeah he, the, a lot of the wood he used was from Lebanon. Cedars of Lebanon. Cedars of Lebanon. Okay, which means pure, white. The elect. You know, Laban means white, pure. And that's what the elect, that's what we're striving to be. Go ahead. It says, Is it not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest? Mm -hmm. It's like, going to continue just to grow. It's going to be a right. fruitful field at one point. It's going to turn into a vast forest of just right. cedar trees. Right. And that's what you see happening right now. We're liking up the trees, right? And how, and, and what, what, what process really aids that, you know, things growing in the earth? Water. Water. And the scriptures talks about how he's going to give us hey. the latter rain, man. Damn. Uh, he will send prophets to the he who believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. <laughs> so we're being we're being watered. That's why you see all of these Israelites sprouting up because the, the, this word is going out. He said, "My doctrine shall drop as rain." Mm. You know, you know hey. the doctrine, the word is going to drop like rain. You know, then when you read in James 5, it tells you what? It says, be patient for the Lord is going to bring the former and the latter rain. Yep. See? I just did a lesson on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 18. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. This right. is that day now. we able to see and hear now from the spirit of the devil. I'll yeah. watch you out of this is it. They keep saying that time and that day, man. This is, man, bro, you can't get around it, man. You got it up. A little bit more. Verse 19. Yeah. The meek also shall increase their joy in Yahweh, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Because Jake the elect is waking up every day, man. So we're rejoicing more and more because we see that hope 
the Lord has come to redeem his people, man, to call us up in the air with him, man, because this captivity is finally over when Yahweh shall come back with all the angels and to destroy this place, man. Yep. And when you get that word, that word beat, in the Hebrew is Ana, Anawa, and it says, poor, weak, and afflicted Israel. Man, you know who the beat is, man. Right. Poor, weak, and afflicted Israel. And then verse 20, check this out. It said that the fruit of the Still is going to be built, you know, the blind, the eyes, the blind eyes are going to see, right? Verse 20. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off, that make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. So as this happens, as the, as this fruitful, as this fruitful field becomes a forest, the blind eyes see. To rejoice in the Lord, Esau is going to be exposed and he's going to be passing laws, whereas you're going to be offended for even speaking this word. Right. Yep. You're going to be, a, it's going to be an offense to even speak this truth. When you get that word offender, that word is chataya or chata, which means a sin or, 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 or to bear guilt or, or to be punished. So now it's likened unto being a sin in Esau's terms if you speak the truth and there comes consequences behind it. You see? So as this word goes out, it's going to be, the, the, the terrible one is going to be brought down through this word coming out, man. He coming out the earth and Lord coming out this ass. Yep. <laughs> right. It's going to be a clash, man. It's going to be a battle, man. Like, you're going to have the prophets of Baal. I'll say it like this, man. You're going to have the prophets of Yahweh by Shem Shai, And the prophets of Baal are going to clash. See, but it's already written that it's already written who's going to win. Yeah. It's already written who's going to be, who's going to be destroyed. You know, Elijah represents the prophets. Yeah. You know, and what happened when the prophets of all went up against him, man? The fire, fire rained Damn. down from on high, you know, and consumed the altar. You know, that fire came down from heaven. Hey, Same thing. Hey, and they failed in front of everybody, in front of everybody. <laughs> they, they failed in front. They caught a big hell, man. That had to be embarrassing. This devil was about to get embarrassed and brought up. Right. They said that they said that the prophets of Baal they were screaming, they was they was they was they was calling to their gods from cutting morning themselves. to evening all day long. They was cutting themselves, they was losing their minds. Elijah was like, Is your God on vacation? Where he at? <laughs> went to the bathroom. He yeah. went to the bathroom. Where he at? Yeah. Mocking those gods, man. And we doing that now. Right. Yep. The spirit, man, that's what's happening right now. We're we're we're, we're, we're like, man, look, you bring forth your strong reason. You know? Where's your witnesses at? Where's where's your prophets at, man? See, because Esau, man, Esau truly believes, he believes in his left hand blessing. He, he has faith in it. See, it's just our people, you know, our people walking around in Bozo world, Bizarro land, you know, walking around and, and, what, and, and they truly believe in this left hand system. That's why two thirds of our people are completely blinded, but the elect have the eye sound to actually see. You know, that was in the market. Let's add another one. Revelation 15 and 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them are filled up the wrath of the Most High God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps, having the harps of the Most High. Is that the same? Is that the same one I said they sing the song of Moses? Yep. Okay. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of the Most High, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, O King of the Saints. Yep, and the, the song of Moses goes, go, it's, it's, there's about two or three different ones. One is in Deuteronomy 32, all right, but the one, all right, uh, uh, that's synonymous with victory over your oppressor is in Exodus the 15th chapter where Moses all right the children of Israel Miriam had a solo song victory all right over Pharaoh when he drowned get it real quick Exodus 15 so when we get on the chariot we're going to be singing that same song but a renewed song a new song and it's going to be victory over the Edomites victory over the beast which is the, 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 the Edomite, his image, which is this very system, which is the revival of Rome. 
idol worship, Rome 2.0, Babylon the Great, the NWO, what they're trying to shove and force down everybody's throat, victory over that, victory over his name, which he's trying to put on people through his mark. Victory over all of that, victory over the, the beast, his image, his mark, his name, and everything he's trying to do, and which he's trying to basically put his footprint, all right, put his fingerprint on the Lord's creation. And he's gonna be stopped. The Lord ain't gonna allow this devil to ultimately uh, uh, put a haragma in everybody. Because if, he, if he's able to do that, then he wins. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 1. Then sang, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. In the prior chapter, the Lord told the Israelites, told Moses, you know they was like, hell no. Nah. Moses said, stand right here. And the Lord, the Lord gonna have him chase, basically stand right here and watch the Lord work. Oh, yeah. And basically, Pharaoh and his army, they got drowned out. So the very next chapter, go ahead, read it again. Uh, Exodus chapter 15 and verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Right, he hath triumphed gloriously. I'm singing unto the Lord. Go ahead. It says, his, the horse and the rider and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Right. The Lord is my strength and song. Right, the horse and his rider have he thrown into the sea. Okay, and the modern day horse and rider, if you go to Revelation, the uh, sixth chapter, all right, the red horse, and he was given a great sword. You Edomites, you represent the modern day Pharaoh who we're getting ready to triumph over. And it's gonna be in an even a more glorious fashion because it was an angel that led the Israelites. It's an angel that was responsible for Moses doing those miracles. All right, and that angel followed the Israelites in the wilderness. He led them out of Egypt into the wilderness. This time we go up, you see, and Ultimately, to be led out of Egypt, we were led into the, 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 the wilderness, but eventually the Lord made a covenant with us. You see? Well, when we get out of this new Egypt, we go up and he's going to make a new covenant with us, all right, in the secret chamber. The chariot, as birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts, all right, defend Jerusalem, passing over, he shall pardon her. Ultimately, the second Passover is coming. And you Edomites just happen to be in a lot of Pharaoh, man. Go ahead. Verse 2, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my power, and I will prepare him a habitation. My father's power, and I will exalt him. Right. Verse 3, the Lord is a man of war. Right. Yahweh is his name. So this whole thing is a song. So when we get on the chariot and we get victory over this, this BS here, you know, when the Lord takes us through whatever we got to go through, Jacob's trouble, which you got many Israelites trying to run away from. No, Jacob's trouble is coming. We're going to be persecuted for what we're teaching, man. This goes against the whole status quo of what this Edomite is setting up. And we're, we're boldly proclaiming it. So what do you think? He's just going to sit back and say, all right, let him, let him keep going. No, he's coming after us. We're, we're witnessing good versus evil being played out in the earth, man. And this message represents good. We're prophesying of a kingdom to come where there's justice, where there's no pedophiles, where the water's clean, the air's clean, the food's all organic and real. You can have a family, land. Here it is, we're on the planet Earth suffering. Well, all of the, the beauty that's in the Earth, the people that live on it are suffering while the, the, the elites just live on, on a high horse, man. Yeah. Well, when we get the kingdom, at least, you know, the, the, the heathen won't be living like us, but at least they'll be able to see a, a, a righteous rulership. Right. Breathe yeah, clean yeah. air. Right. Yeah. 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 The laws is going to lead to this place being cleaned up. Yeah. You Edomites got to go, man. <laughs> You're a problem. Uh, verse uh, verse 4, it says, Pharaoh's chariots and his host have he cast into the sea. Yes, and they sung about it. Was that racist? <laughs> and why, why, why did that happen to Pharaoh and them? Because of his rebellion against the Most High. And he had they had the Israelites in slavery all right for 400 and some years so so is it is it wrong to say that you edomites are going to pay for having us in slavery and rebelling against the lord no if we so-called racist moses is racist which racist just means to, to to advocate for your own people man 
and, and, the, and the Most High advocates for his own people, Yahweh Shai advocates for his own people, and so do we. But we're not going to go out and because we're Israelites, harm, you know, go and harm another race of people. We're not, we're not commanded to do that. But when we get the power, it's on. Yeah. Why is an advocate for their own race? And if you walk up too close up on them, that's, that's when they get your ass. Man, 2nd Andrews 13 goes into that. That's advocating for us. Yeah, we, we the only ones advocating for our people, man. Um, Sir, Sirach 13. Okay. Yeah, it talks about a... Get uh, sorted. Get sorted. book of Sirach chapter 13 verse 15 every beast loveth his life every, every beast loveth his life this is another yeah. story, man. Nope. right cows hang with cows certain animals do are in the same habitat and chilling together but, but, but for the most part they on their own thing <laughs> go ahead yep. it says Sirach 13 and 15 Every beast loveth his life, and every man loveth his neighbor. And who's the neighbor in the scriptures? You're Israelite. According to the law, your neighbor is an Israelite. Go ahead. All flesh consorteth according to kind, and a man will cleave to his light. There you go. Cleave to his light, man. <laughs> We're down to 17. I was about to say it's a little bit more, yeah. Yeah, 17, 18. It says, what fellowship hath the wolf with the lamb? <laughs> so the sir, right, you at the podium. <laughs> all right, you a lamb when you at the podium voting for the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> then you wonder why he keep passing policies that destroy the lamb. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know you're wolf. wolf. Yeah, you know you're wolf. <laughs> you see him put the you see him put the lamb mask on. Yeah. He still got the paws. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you, you know. <laughs> oh my. God. Fellowship had the wolf with the lamb. So the sinner with the godly. What agreement is there between the hyena and the dog? There you go. And what peace between the rich and the poor? Ooh, you know? That goes to show you, man. There's a and the Lord, the Lord had made a separation. You know, he had made a separation between Israel and the Egyptians. So if we if Pharaoh is likened unto modern day uh if Pharaoh if Esau is likened unto modern day Pharaoh today, that'll let you know who the modern day Egyptians are today. You had Jake calling themselves Egyptians back then, even though they were Israelites. You see? But the Lord had made a difference between the uh, the Egyptians and Israel, man. You know? How oh, sir. Okay, this is Matthew chapter 12. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, Matthew chapter 12. Uh, I'm going to read now. Actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to start at verse 15 just to get the point of read down for the, for the context. It says, but when Yahweh knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. And he charged them that they should not make him known. Right, he didn't want to be made of no reputation, man. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen. My beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. And that Gentiles is talking about the Israelite foreigners, man. And the judgment is talking about the justice which comes with this word being spoken, right? He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. And he's, and he's quoting, uh, what's that, Isaiah 53? I'm oh, sorry, Isaiah 42. You see? Like you got Jake talking about, see you ain't supposed to be prophesying out so outside on the streets, brother. Yeah. No, it's going into the fact that he didn't like like what the elders he mentioned. He didn't want to be made of a of a public reputation and things like that. Right. See, just like us, man, we ain't out here to try to be made on yeah. reputation in the sense of you know such and such burns down Dallas, Texas, in the streets, some fire flames. You know, standing there on the thumbnail with fire on fire. You know, they ain't, they ain't what you're supposed to be doing, right? right. Verse twenty is the point. A bruised reed shall he, shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. Yeah. See, till he send forth judgment unto victory, and that judgment is being sent forth, obviously, right now, first and foremost, with this word going out. The judgment is being put out until 
victory. It's not telling you that the judge is going to go out until possibly victory is going to come. Nope. No, it says until the victory comes. Yep. It's coming. Just like the fall came. <laughs> that was written, the victory is coming. I got that word victory. That word is Nikas. Nike. Nikas. Like Nike. Mm -hmm. Or Nigas. <laughs> Nigas. 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 <laughs> yeah, Nike is a Greek goddess for victory. Yep. Yep. And then when you get that, that Nike, or the other name, uh, Nico, right. goes back to victory. Yep. Right? Like Thessalonica. Victory over the false. Oh, yeah. Wow, man. <laughs> man, that's why you gotta know your that's why getting into words is fun, man. When you get a word, you can literally do a whole lesson just based off of one word. You know? But it says in that particular verse here, it says, uh, victory until he have gained the victory, death is swallowed up in victory to everlasting splendor. Forever. Everlasting. See? That's what that word victory is going into. Until what? Until when we get caught up into them chariots, Lord, when we have that number, what? We're going to be transformed and changed into a splendor. We're going to be likened unto Yahweh Shai. Man, that's when, that's when, that's when death is going to be swallowed up. Man, for that's the, when we start that's, living. That's, that's, that's the new covenant. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's salvation. That's it. That's salvation, man. That's victory over falsity, man. That's it. But it has to be proclaimed first. You see? That's why the scripture says that the kingdom of heaven shall be in you. The kingdom of heaven is this word going out initially. Right. You see, because it enters into the mind of the elect to see being sown. And that thought or that belief is going to spring forth into it's, it's going to spring forth into action to where it's actually going to happen. And we believe that. We truly believe that America's going to be destroyed. We ain't, we ain't out here just talking shit. You see? We ain't out here just calling a so-called white man you saw the devil just for fun. You know, when you first come in, you know you come in and saying it. You know, but after a while, man, you wow, like we like, like brought that. time. Oh boy, he's bad. He's bad for business. Yeah. He gotta go. He gotta go. He gotta be moved out the way, man. He got. He has to go. I see now more and more now, like why Yahweh Shah said, "Look, if he doesn't return, there will be no flesh left to be saved." Like that. Like I see it like more now. Like if he ain't pushed out the way, everything would die. Everything would die, and then he would just kill out. He would just he would, he would just destroy himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yep. Go to Mars, build a McDonald's. He wouldn't stop. You know? Concrete on Mars. Golly. That was okay. So, so with that, we will give all praises to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh, 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 Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations. To the elect. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.